Okay, so basically I'm very interested in uh, this topic, deep learning, and uh, there's a couple of papers that came out recently. Um, basically, uh, the, the main one really is this one, deep compression, uh, which basically looking at compressing data, uh, the, the node, the, sorry, the, the weights within those uh, neural network by pruning, training, quantization, and Huffman coding. Uh, looking at uh, the archive website, actually, I, I find that there's actually quite a lot of other papers that actually extend a lot of those those concepts that is being presented recently. Uh, this paper is from a, a recent uh, international conference, uh, learning representation, uh, and then they also actually presented, uh, I think, even more recently, some inference engines. So actually, they're building their own deep learning box uh, with ASIC. Actually, it's really a, a study, and then uh, a, a technical report which came very recently is really looking at uh, uh, having those nodes very, very, very compressed. And actually, ultimately, they target to actually run things on mobile phone or actually even uh, like uh, embedded system, etc. Uh, a lot of the the motivation behind those those uh, those papers or this type of, of direction of research is really to reduce the power consumption, power consumption. Sorry, uh, looking at application uh, for. Uh, yeah, 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 I go, I go, I go. Noise uh, reduction, for example. <laughs> and uh, those are ma mainly they're looking at a vehicle uh, system that you will, you will have in your car, detecting the road, detecting pedestrian. So actually, they really uh, emphasize on, on the fact that they will uh, reduce the, the, the training set, the training, uh, the, the, the weights of those, uh, the size of those weights to actually have things in, in the mobile, mobile system. Uh, pruning, training, quantization, and Huffman, there's nothing new really in those topics. Uh, people who are work, used to work in neural network, or working in neural network, know those topics for a long time. Initialization, correction. It's just that it's a quite niche application for those deep learning uh, uh, systems. So, uh, for those who, 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 who basically uh, don't know about uh, deep learning, I, I think I can easily uh, summarize it as a as a neural net. So, most of the time, you you start with an, Im an image if it's basically image uh, recognition. Uh, there's a lot, there's, let's say, normalization. Then you go through a lot of different stages, different layers. And for these, you have uh, convolution, pooling, uh, operation, which basically look at small parts of the, of the image and basically could go to the other stage. And ultimately, you end up with a classification. I will not go into too much detail, but those are the, the, the sort of reference paper from Luke One uh, in the early, early time uh, of, of those developments. So uh, a lot of those uh, papers, they refer to some of those uh, net. And uh, basically, in time, there was uh, this one, the LearnNet, which is the first uh, successful application of neural network by this guy, Yael Le Guin, in the 90s. And then afterwards, they actually look at uh, all other networks called AlexNet, which was popularized by uh, really in the, computer, the field of uh, computer vision. And then VGGNet. Uh, VGG uh, stands for Video Group. Uh, it's, it's a group basically in, uh, in Oxford in the UK. And they basically provide uh, all these networks already trained and they basically put all these weights on the internet and you can actually download them, have your own system. All this deep learning uh, is actually very uh, shared. A lot of the data, a lot of the tools are actually really available for people to try. However, you tend to have a, a need for uh, some good hardware to really try things out. Uh, so those, those AlexNet and VGNet, we'll see them in, into the, in the papers. So the papers are, are basically from those Songhan. Uh, and you can see already that there's actually a NVDA involvement, because basically a lot of those neural networks actually are, are implementing GPU. Uh, later on in some of the paper, they compare GPU, FPGA, CPU, GPU, FPGA, and ASIC. And uh, ultimately, you can access a GPU, you can access uh, uh, a CPU, your own CPU. Your GPU is basically buying cards. FPGA, you can buy FPGA and program. ASIC is really the ultimate level where they even basically optimize those core, etc., and actually make a ASIC to actually. Uh, so the third paper is really developing an, an ASIC in, into this. So the paper is uh, basically uh, introducing the uh, pruning, basically, uh, quantizing the, the, the weights. And also there's something, I mean, from a network, neural network point of view, is also weight sharing. There's actually techniques to actually even more reduce than quantizing the precision of those, uh, of those weights, is to actually have uh, a pool of weights and actually being shared. So this reviews even more. 
Half man turning actually is not really uh, explained that much, but it's basically really data compression. This is where you really uh, uh, encode. I mean, uh, your nodes into 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 some. Uh, it's a dictionary, and afterwards you basically expand things. Then they do some uh, experiment with those um, those uh, networks, and afterwards they discuss all sorts of uh, speed up ratio, central, etc. Uh, so this is a, a quite, quite quite an interesting paper. Um, so the original, uh, basically, nodes of those uh, neural nets, they go through those stage of pruning, quantization, and Huffman. So what you have to really, really uh, understand is that all of these stages uh, can be done offline, in a sense. You can get a, a huge amount of data, which is a neural net model, from the internet, and actually pro process the, no the, the, the weights for each of those. And then they show really in the paper that they can really dramatically reduce the the, 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 the size of those uh, of those weights. So the three stage compression is the pipeline pruning from seven and half man. Uh, to give you an idea, the pruning uh, reduced the number of weights by ten, quantization by twenty seven to to thirty one, and afterwards ultimately when they compress, they have really a compression of forty nine. So really, it's a, it's a dramatic dramatic amount of, uh, of of reduction of the weights uh, to actually. And uh, really, the the beauty I would say for this is that. When they actually test those, uh, they basically say that there is no uh, accuracy loss. So really, for people who in the early stage had those massive neural network, were struggling to actually, you know, train them, etc. And then ultimately, some people say, oh, with those three three methods, we can reduce. And actually, the loss here is is actually uh, uh, really not there. There's no loss in a sense. So we can see that this will facilitate greatly the implementation on on, on mobile systems or. Like, system with much reduced uh, reduced uh, uh, resources so some of the uh, part is for example the weight sharing and the con uh, scalar quantization so they use some sort of encoding uh, to basically uh, sh um, have some sort of index in which they can add they can uh, access uh, to the, uh, access the weights so they have they explain in the paper all these sort of techniques when they basically have an index and for this one, they basically use centroid. So they, they let's say they have a, a bunch of, uh, of, uh, of, of weights, and they try to cluster them into three, two, one, zero. And afterwards, they look at the gradient. They have the same, and then they reduce, and ultimately, they end up with a centroid thing. It, it, in a sense, it's, it's very uh, gross. Actually, it's not really a very, uh, uh, I would say, elegant processing. But ultimately, having some sort of processing like this reduces the the the, the, the the weights. So actually, ultimately, whatever method they use, uh, this uh, is good enough for them to use later without having any loss. So from a single processing point of view, the, the this stage is, is quite, uh, I would say. Well, it, it can also be called Lloyd's album, which is the same as um, something, the turbine, whatever. Yeah, yeah, this but I mean, I mean, <laughs> from, from a, you know, from, from the, the the original uh, like weights. I mean, the original oh, accuracy like of, of those weights. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's it's really dramatic. You know, you end up with basically a centroid at the end. With uh, so they also look at the different uh, different methods for this uh, centroid initialization with some sort of distribution. They basically look here when it's like let's say non-uniform, or they try to find some uniformity in the in, in the weights. Uh, I find the paper from a single processing point of view. It's really applying those three techniques, and, and and at the end they end up with you know quite some massive reduction in the way. So it's not a major major paper. If actually people who were doing neural network study, pure neural network research before, these paper are applying three methods and and dramatically reducing the the, the, the data. However, from a, a point of view of, of let's say performance, they can really uh, reduce the I said the weights from let's say uh, you know one gigabyte uh, here to 27 ki kilobytes. So here you can really see that from a machine that you know would, would need would require a lot of memory initially to implement that neural network. Now just requires a, a very small uh, memory footprint. So those those compression rates are really uh, significant. I think for that that kind of, uh, of the, this is the VG VGG. Yeah, yeah. Does this compression rate also implies that the uh, size of the network and length of computation is also reduced, or is it just no? They they basically strain the neural network with a full precision and later on reduce those weights. 
the, so the, the question is basically when they quantize the weights, does it mean that also they spend less time computing the results? Yes, yeah, ultimately yes, yeah. because down the line when you actually have an implementation that, that requires uh, some of the weights go from 32 bit to let's say 6 bits, yeah. of course the, uh, the, if you have a hard, if you implement it on an FPGA or an ASIC in 5 bit let's say multiplication etc, it, use, it uses less resources. However, I don't know whether implementing on a GPU can really have those weights uh, into a 4-bit format, let's say. For this, I'm not exactly sure. Usually when you work in CUDA, you usually have an integer. You have those fixed uh, fix, uh, uh, word length for your variables. So somehow here, it's really t uh, geared toward FPGA or, or ASIC, having a, a real reduced uh, uh, word length for all your coefficients. then your uh, dense matrix becomes a sparse matrix. Now if we can write your code to efficiently multiply sparse matrices, then you thereby you are reducing the computation time. So that's for the pruning. The pruning. Yeah, that's, pruning. That's the so pruning is removing node, quantizing is really the weights, and then afterwards uh, compression is really ultimately how you access those weights. So if you actually have all your weights uh, Hoffman compressed or uh, transformed, let's say, or compressed. Afterward, you still need some mechanics or some modules to actually uncompress them and actually pick the right one. So somewhere there, the the win in terms of space from a compression point of view is there, but ultimately you, you pay the price with a bit of decompression. However, the pruning is a real removal of weights, and the quantization is really a real removal of bits to represent those uh, those weights. I mean, those those uh, those figures here of compression weight. Uh, are pretty big. I mean, uh, if when when you know something here is half a gig down to 11 megabytes uh, from a, from a platform point of view, you really can see that you, know, you will you will have that, that really suggests that most of these networks hold really little information. Just uh, actually, the, 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 no, I think the the issue is like the original one. They were they actually trained on PC, which is 32 bits. So you actually have a huge of a room for actually you know precision but down the line the task uh, the task for which those neural networks were trained do not require so much precision in a sense so this could be seen as, a, as an achievement in terms of compression but down the line if you look at it from a application perspective it means that the application of these object recognition etc do not require 32 bits in the first place, so it depends on how you know. I mean, how the way of the training process no, you, you were using a, a Ferrari for going at 50 miles an yeah. hour. Basically, mm -hmm. this is what you know, and, and the price of this in terms of hardware, uh, right. no, becomes kind of scary you, because you're doing gradients along the way. You have to do it at better precision. You can't. No, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. I mean, this is this is this is uh, used for the training. So somehow, I just wonder whether you could still train such neural networks with that amount of, uh, okay, it goes that way. You have the original data, you train and you obtain a neural network. If you prove that the neural network do not need so much precision to actually perform, then you could ideally train a neural network with that amount of, of, of because the, the loss is not there. They said no loss in accuracy. No, uh, yeah, no accuracy. Yeah, that's the, the interesting part. So if you imagine your brain, if it could be so compressed 40 times, it would be, you know, su super, super intelligent. Here, the, the issue is here. If you have a neural net which is trained with that amount of, of data for the weights, and actually they can show that this amount of data for the weights are only necessary to obtain, the, the ratio here is, is not relevant, but to achieve the same recognition, it means that ultimately you could train a neural net with that amount of, of weights, 11, and still have the same because here we're actually using the same neural net. It's just that we are pruning, and by pruning, quantizing, and, and compressing, we still actually have the same uh, the same performance. His point is that every step, gradient step you make might be too small to be to be represented by a float eight or whatever. Oh uh, no! Uh, so on the, the on you on on stuff may be hovering near one, and it yeah. may escape to an actual value. If you can't continually chopping it to zero. You don't ever get to it, explore it, the, the in, in space a, in, in the a tra way. In a training, yes, but, but I, I think that maybe, the, uh, what I say, when people train, then, then, then the, when you train your neural net, 
you tend to, let's say, have an integer on your machine, it's a 32 bit. Mm -hmm. But do you ever say, oh, let's put at 16 bit and see actually how. I think people how, have done it with 16 bit. Uh, how? Well, Nvidia is just doing GPUs with 16 bit yeah. now. Yeah. Right? yeah. So that's 16 bits is fine, but 6 or 3 or something. But that, that's three. basically what. Uh, mm -hmm. You see that? That basically what. Uh, so. Uh, these are examples in, in the in those paper where they look at the different uh, al uh, the different networks and afterwards they look at different layers and they see how much weights how much they actually gain by pruning and quantizing and see the weight bits become six four etc and at the end they end up with this 40 39 so but from this you can infer that Training uh, ne neural network with floating points is sounds generally wasteful already <laughs> well that, that, that's what, that's where yeah uh, the training happens with full precision, so there is no... Yeah, but the, the question training. is like, if, uh, the Brahim tries to say that you can train it with... Uh, you, you, uh, you, may, you may be able to train it with pruning, lesser precision. Uh, so the pruning How? happens uh, with the, the pruning, point. but not quantization. Mm -hmm. After that, you take that and quantization. Yeah, but how do you... So then the clustering, the k-min clustering that they use is with whatever the bit, uh, six bit or whatever. And then after that comes half and pruning. So the gradient problem doesn't exist because they are training with full precision. Yeah, yeah, but that, that's why that's why I was saying that if you actually train them with a lesser precision, uh, Martin was saying actually that lesser precision will so actually interfere with the with the, the training in a sense. It's a problem. Yeah. yeah, it's either you cannot converge or you take a very very long time to converge. Mm -hmm. in, in the in mathematical sense, la, I would think. I mean those 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 paper. I mean those specific paper. It's really from one which from one train neural network. How can they actually reduce the size to in in a, in a, in the not not in a training phase but in the application phase to actually you know obtain those smaller in size and actually still having the same performance. So you know and down the line those those pa those those paper do not talk about the training. They they basically. Talk about the reduction without loss, w a reduction of the weights without having a loss in precision when you use them. Uh, and down the line, they actually, uh, um, I would say, uh, emphasize the fact that basically it's to, without uh, having uh, a much less, a much uh, smaller uh, footprint in terms of memory for those weights, meaning that you don't need to use external RAM, you can use internal RAM, uh, and it will be basically easier for mobile phone application. So it, the the argument is is there from a uh, from that point of view, not not from a mathematical point of view or for a neural network point of view. Mm -hmm. Someone who would be doing neural network, this paper has no real. It doesn't actually demonstrate that much. It just demonstrates that you can actually reduce. There's loads of papers on on, on reducing weights, initialization of the weights in the first place, etc. Those papers tend to be a bit more of an application and target towards. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mentioned you know, I'd like 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, after, yeah, 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 okay. Um, so, other, other networks actually have uh, uh, more layers, so actually they, they have, I, I would say, more room to, uh, to reduce the weights, and down the line, some of them, you know, get 35, etc. Actually, the, the nice thing is that they, uh, they really uh, try to see, you know, the influence between the different, uh, the different algorithm, I mean, the different uh, reduction here, Either which is you know Hoffman plus something or, or P and Q. Uh, so for this, you, when you actually have access to the tools or to have uh, uh, some of those networks, you, you know it's not difficult to actually get the get the weights and actually end up pruning them, etc. And, and see what what is the what happened. Some of the uh, latest, uh, I mean, or more complicated uh, network have even more uh, basically layers. Uh, and here you end up with 137, and, and they basically. Uh, Get two percent of it if you use like uh, an improvement of forty nine. I think you know in, in I mean in certain domain, reducing the, the the whole weight of a neural network by forty nine is is quite a I wouldn't say an achievement. I would say that maybe the data was hyper redundant in the first place or was you know had a lot yeah, of, that, of. That's the valid question. So how far can you go with training this uh, in the redundant well, uh, representation yeah, yeah. or or non redundant one? But then so you, say yeah, you, you, you don't you, do pruning, you, you which always allow for quantized, say, 32 bit, not really go to down to six bits. Then maybe it's the works. Mm -hmm. I, I guess this is the easy way. You have a huge, you know, huge because network you know, trained, the and you prune them. Like with training, um, you normally start with a ra rather big step size, 
which means that you also start with relatively low accuracy. Mm -hmm. So then you would not notice. And then there, there are adaptive training schedules that basically decrease the step size and maybe also increase accuracy. So why not use them? And so for this, they, they basically gradual. look at also at uh, the amount of accuracy loss uh, versus the amount of uh, compression. So this is really gradual. So basically, if you really compress a certain number, you really have a gradual uh, uh, reduction or not in, in this. Some of those paper, I mean, some of those curve like this, there's not much detail. So sometimes it's a bit, uh, and, and you know, they, they compare this to uh, SVD, like a, a quite standard old method in a sense. So it's not, for me, it's not always a very objective, objective the, the way they present data. But then as a researcher, I know that sometimes you want to present data in a way that you know, fits you. It fits. <laughs> huh? uh, uh, basically, I think it's it's if you if you reduce like negative accuracy loss. Like accuracy yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, yeah, uh, wait, but the positive number would be a loss, right? Yeah, no, no, no. I suppose it is lost to the, so the, the accuracy loss. of of the thing. So from yeah. zero. Oh, so so they, they should oh. drop the word loss. Then so that's clear. Accuracy. Accuracy. Yeah. Accuracy. Yeah. 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 How does it gain accuracy? That's so how does it no, no, gain no, it, no. It doesn't gain accuracy. It's it's the accuracy of what they had in the first place. And actually, the more you quantize or the more you reduce that, you will lose that accuracy. Okay. So actually, it's going backwards. It's, it's I, 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 I actually, be, yeah, I might actually believe it when it becomes accurate. more accurate. Yeah. No, it's, it's like a regularization it's effect, it's especially if they... Were no, it doesn't do get more accurate. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, it's just yeah, like it more accurate. In another so network, it's called SquareNet. There is, yeah. in some cases, it is yeah. generally yeah. slightly improvement. So, so my prof has been trying to do SVD and then tuning it further, and then you get an improvement. Yeah, but this, this, yeah, this curve so here, do, uh, it's, it's, it's from uh, normal, uh, maximum accuracy down to, it's, uh, it's the other way around. It's not, yeah, you, yeah. you don't improve the accuracy. They have a neural net which is very accurate. Yeah. Okay, I was wondering if it's the other way. Okay. Um, yeah, afterward, there's a lot of, of uh, you know, printing doesn't hurt quantization. They try to see the sort of effects from one to another. Uh, uh, they're looking at three bits, four bits, seven bits, eight bits. So. Uh, I'm quite surprised for me, even from a normal network point of view, how you get some, you know, some, uh, some still some good values with only six bits compared to, you know, a 32 bit, the, you know, it's really like, 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 you know, like cutting, uh, cutting really, really harsh. Uh, yeah, uh, all these are uh, integers or floats? Uh? I think, uh, I'm not sure if they said, but usually it's a floating point and afterwards you, you basically reduce the accuracy. So I think. The no, no, I, what I mean is to say, is it uh, represented by a 6 bit float or a 6 bit no float? There's no 6 bit float. There's no 6 bit float. Right? Only 32 and 64. But then the weight, the weight will, should be 32 bit integer, maybe. So now the uh, standards are coming for 16 bit as well as it's a NVIDIA is coming up to so use 16 bit for half of the same. Okay, okay. Most of the time, you, you, you train the neural network in a floating That's point, and right. afterward you try to yeah. basically yeah. chop. That's a big question here. Do you really want to train the floating point, which is much, much more expensive than, say, fixed yeah, point? Yeah, it, 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 it's more expensive if you have the hardware that actually yeah. do a training in 4 bits. How do you train your hardware in 4 bits if your architecture, which is a CPU or a GPU, is not a 4 bit? You see, it goes the other way. You can but say you can it also will do it 20, 32 bits. Fixed but the, the original is 32 bits because it's a, G, a GPU or CPU. These are the standard sort of uh, length. You, you, you could uh, program a, a six bit training method on a FPGA, but then it's probably easier to train it and later. I mean, this is a sort of natural way. You have a massive amount of data, you get a result, you chop, 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 you check if the result is better. And if it's better, then you say, oh, this is actually, you know. That the amount of, of data I can so reduce. It's very, very interesting because the remember that the on, on your mobile phone etc. is going to be an ARM core, so yeah, this will still be a, a CPU in a sense. We still, the, the claim is that without the GPUs and super computing powers of today, we would not be able to train deep learning ne neural networks. And what it shows here, well, we we could if we knew what is the intended accuracy. Uh, down, down here, they only say it's accuracy, but they never state what is the time it took for them to reach this yeah. to reach this. Oh no, accuracy. for this, it's it's uh, no no the what, it is it, you can time it because you you actually have the tools to to do it yourself. You you can time how long it takes to train those networks. 
at a full precision, I would say. Yeah, you, you know. Uh, uh, no, but, but this one, this one actually, you don't train at that precision. You have the full precision and you cut some part which you say, oh, this may be not useful. And when you actually use the same network with those missing, you still get the same performance. So you say that precision is actually not, use, not useful anymore. Instead of a 32 bit, which you expect to be enough to represent that precision, it's actually six bits are only, a six bits accuracy is actually valid. Mm. Technically, we are truncating some part of the uh, digits. In a sense, yes. Mm. Certain weights will, will have some truncation, where others will not have. Yeah. So how, how do you translate, how do you reduce a 32 bit space integer into... Uh, you, you normalize so them and afterward you chop them basically. Uh, they, no, they need to yeah, be aligned. You, you need yeah, to yeah, normalize you need and quantize them. Then yeah, you need to... Have to yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you, you cannot say 32 uh, chop to 16. I mean, you have to... But somehow, by, when you scale them to uh, normalize 1 to 0, afterwards, when you actually, you know, 0 0.5 become 1 bit, you, you still end up and, and somehow... And this thing where you have the centroids, it's like putting... You, you find the best values to quantize. If you don't just say quantize it e in even linear places. You say, mm. I want one piece up here and then three pieces down here. And one yeah, so, so, it, so you find yeah. the bucket. It, it would be like this. It, you, you would basically five. specify your range, maybe only from this. Then okay. you would say that this is a... So it becomes a non-uniformity from a range point of view mm. to so map. you can store a little dictionary of where mm. you've got into light as well. Mm. And you then expand it out. Mm. <laughs> so afterward is a classic uh, CPU versus GPU versus C, uh, I guess this TK1 is a GPU processor in a sense, I mean, uh, uh, so afterwards all the numbers in green, uh, green is uh, GPU pruned, is, you know, multiplied by 90, everything is basically higher, so this is what is expected from a research paper where all your results are always, you know, <laughs> somewhere there, somehow, you know, this one and this one, you know, becomes, uh, in, the, in the paper where they actually present really a hardware system, uh, it's the same. The, the you know the numbers are, are, are nice and like. Uh, um, be, because I mean, forty times improvement. If one no no no, could so it's forty times smaller. Smaller, yeah. You, have, yeah, you, you, you reduce could, by forty if times. You could imagine that even ten times you can speed up the learning process. I don't think it's about learning. learning. No, it's not. It's, it's really no. no. Yeah, I, I think it's like this. It's like this. You had metal before. You have Kevlar. Okay. And then you say, these protect as much as they could at that time. Metal in the past, Kevlar now. Then you look at the weight, the real weight. Metal is more heavy and Kevlar is lighter. So you say, it's lighter. And also, because it's lighter, my car can go faster. In a sense. The, you know, I, I tried to make that sort of, you know, it, it's, not, it's not fast. The, the, the neural network will be faster in a sense if you implement your hardware in a 4-bit you know, precision here when you have to implement them. But uh, my, my, my concern in those papers is that when they talk about GPU, how do you actually implement those in GPU? You cannot. The GPU doesn't have those uh, number of bits allo allocation for, for those integers. So somewhere there, th there is some oh, gray area. You can try to use saturated arithmetics. But, I but in the, GP the GPU is, is still very classic in, in, uh, yeah. in, uh, you know, in a core. Where when they show paper, I mean the, the last paper, um, so if I continue, this is, you know, the index, and especially for the code word, they, they're looking at the code word, uh, the weights, the index, and the code word, so they, they see the sort of what is needed in terms of percentage in those weights, uh, which, uh, because the way that basically they encode is not only the weight, is the index now, they're actually accessing tables to compress things, etc., etc. So they have this, this part, uh, for me, it's not really, really, uh, uh, how would I say, very, the, the most interesting part of the thing. Uh, still, you know, parameters, etc. Uh, they, they really, uh, really, the issue here is, is a top one error, which is in the te in terms of those competition uh, organized for those neural network. Even with you know that amount of, uh, of of weight, they still stay in those top one. So they're reducing greatly the weights the weights of the neural network, but they still stay in that top one, meaning that it can still recognize at so many percent, etc., etc. Um, another paper which was uh, basically uh, from the same, more or less the same team. Uh, this is a NIPS conference. So f compared to the previous one, I would say NIPS is a higher caliber conference. And this one is a paper that uh, was uh, from the year before. And this paper uh, in the same trench basically uh, provide quite similar, um, how would I say, uh, results. Uh, for me, the interesting thing is this. With NIPS, you can actually get the review of those. 
So you can really see that from a submission of the paper, what are the top people in the world criticizing that paper? Then you can read and, and see, you know, what was the, the issue. There's a couple of typo, etc., etc. But there's this is this is the real research. It's when you get the reviewer, you know. It's, it's not when ICLR you, 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 huh? open reviews on it. ICLR is also for which paper? I see a lot. You can even see it during the review process. Yeah. Of these, of these nips, ICLR. you mean? Anyone. The previous paper was ICLR, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't, I didn't see the review. Just uh, I came across this one. Actually, when I tried to, to download it, I, I saw these uh, nips. I didn't know. So I can ask question the first paper. Yeah. How do they do pruning and Huffman compression? The the pruning is done um, basically by just removing certain uh, connection, retraining it, and see basically what what is the. It, it's not. It's not you, you threshold certain certain weights. Basically, it's the, the connectivity, the the weights okay. which are the least. Uh, it's a bit like um, it's a bit like feature selection, basically. The, the zero. Yeah. 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 The, the, yeah. So the more uh, the more the bigger weights, the more importance they put it into okay. the thing. It's a classic. Uh, for this one, they just the paragraph is very small. It's just said that we're using a Hoffman, etc. It, it, they don't say much. It's From my point of view, when 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 you, when you implement the weight and index, that figure out yourself. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's just. Uh, but, but still, still, it it, it it reduced it it, it further reduced the the weights. However, uh, the the it it's good to show uh, you know a huge reduction like this. Later on, if you actually implement it in real, you need to do the decoding. The you know all this decoding because everything is. So oh, I thought the pruning they do it actually iteratively. Is it? So they remove some mm. and then they trade again and yeah. then yeah. 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 trade and remove. Yeah. These oh. are not. These are not. Uh, there's a there's a paper called what maximum brain damage or something. <laughs> yeah, really? yeah, I think Yang Lecon does okay. this thing quite. So oh, yeah. that's interesting. Those methods are not. I mean, they're not. Yeah. Uh, new. Yeah, new. They they are okay. actually. Uh, be before you prune this, you actually have another method in front, which is initialization on neural network. Which has also it's another field also which is which is uh, so well, maybe the interesting thanks. part of, of this pruning process is that since they have to retrain it, it makes the training much much longer than normal training. Uh, or, or is it not? Interesting. Because basically they train it the first time, then they prune and train again. Yes. Train yes. again Correct. with a lower training rate. Yeah. Learning rate is very very less. Here there's a. And this cycle repeats, say, five or six times. So it means I don't, I don't, no, 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 I don't, I don't think they retrain. I don't think they retrain. They prune the connection, and and then they test those 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 train weight with the prune. And I don't think they retrain. I don't think they retrain. Yeah, I don't think so because this is here data reduction. I don't, I don't think they retrain. No, actually, I think what what is the the iterative part is you prune, you test with the weights, and then you reprune. Yeah, and I don't you, you may until retrain the weights, the remaining yeah. weights, to kind of compensate for the fact that you've just zero to drop stuff. Mm -hmm. in so you may just like want to pump everything up a little bit. So there needs to, to, be be to be checked, yeah, to be checked, to be, to be checked. So do some rehabilitation and then you... <laughs> Neuroplasticity. So the second paper, I mean, the second <laughs> paper is more or like less the same. Uh, but the second paper insists more into this, uh, I mean, this is the... The, the, the real issue behind is energy. They said that you know using a GPU you actually consume a lot of energy, uh, and the fact that if you actually resume the access to the DRAM, which costs that much amount of picojoule per etc., then ultimately by by reducing the weights you actually don't have access to the to the external RAM, which means that you have internal RAM and it's faster. It 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 makes sense in this. It makes sense. It makes sense from a from actually you you you. you Size, power, speed, uh, you know, complexity. You can play with all sorts of factors to actually uh, justify your, your your methodology here. Um, and then this is uh, yeah, the reference is from this Mark Orwat, uh, which has a table of those uh, Stanford UVSI group. Uh, th these are uh, it's important because they actually you know emphasize on the m mobility, the fact that they want to have it in the mobile mobile uh, things um, so they have the same you see training before training before pruning and then after basically some of those are, are removed and it's three trip uh, training pipeline um, same uh, yeah at that time actually uh, it seemed to be the same 
uh, networks, but actually the compression rate seems to be uh, smaller. Uh, so I think this one only you doesn't use the. Um, I think this one only use. Uh, they only remove the only thing, right? right? Yeah, it's only the yeah, uh, only the pruning, only the pruning maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. So actually, maybe you know afterwards mm -hmm. they basically add a third, the this uh, Hoffman Hoffman idea, which uh, the the pruning and the quantizing is really uh, sort of logic type of, type of of thing or easy to to do oh. the the without having any any more things to do at the decoding of the weights let's say because you basically remove the you know the, the complex the accuracy of, of those but the Huffman uh, encoding you you need a decoder afterwards or some sort of the compressor uh, thing so these actually are, are less uh, this is like a system with the previous paper the previous paper the pruning part is about nine times yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I mean it's like you know over the years you improve your method and, and you have more more uh, um, so they use the same same neural network and end up with 16. Here they're also looking at uh, the amount of uh, weights and also the computation. So they have really two, um, they end up with really two metric to actually assess how, how good they are. Um, and they're also looking at uh, also per layer, the, this is a sort of representation uh, of the amount of, of things that, that they would uh, have a reminder versus the amount that they can prune. So you can you can maybe see that you know the the convolution part actually is not pruned at all, but all the others are. are. So they, there is certain layers which are more likely to be pruned than others. Maybe I don't know. They are, they don't really do any uh, sort of conclusion. But then down the line they're looking for th those those numbers. Uh, same same curve as before with this accuracy loss. It's like a, a repetitive thing. Then like you said, you know the the basically they're looking at the the sort of uh, centroid and then afterwards. Try to, to, to cater for a specific range for the for those coefficients. O overall, I find that you know naive cut SVN. All these are, are also um, standard or, or maybe like prior art in the sense of, of those methods. And then theirs is actually uh, not better than those in that top floor, but at least in terms of, of reduction, it's actually higher. So it's always you know you gain on one side, but you, you cannot win on on all uh, all things. Uh, from a hardware point of view, um, this is also a paper from those group, which basically uh, they define, they design an efficient inferring engine. So this is really going into. Um, so I mean, those papers have a lot in common. Huh? If you're doing research, remember that you know every year, every six months when you write a paper, you can also use that same table because basically <laughs> nothing has changed. Huh? And if you put if you put that reference as a VLSI a Stanford professor. I'm not sure if it's recorded. I don't want to be on internet too much, but uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's it's the same same game here. Uh, same neural nets, basically faster, faster, faster. <laughs> here, however, they they really design you know some 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 ASIC. So here you are going okay, into okay. into the real hardware thing when they look at the model. They say, oh, we're gonna actually you know reduce things severely. Uh, they talk about this. This is more interesting in the they end up with a, a processing element which later they define like this. Uh, they have a, a non-zero lead node detection here. We have a north, south, east, west. You end up with a sort of a mesh of things. This becomes, you know, real design. Uh, at the end, when you have the word ASIC, you realize that you know there's money invested in this. Why? Because because I think those those companies they do the pre sort of pre-analysis of what could be in the future design of of, of component that could be sold to whatever Apple or whoever, but is those pre-study at the moment when people, all people can buy a GPU card and do all sorts, you are over that barrier of that GPU for accessible to everybody and you move into the space of having your own ASIC. So if you have a paper with this picture, then you realize you're well-funded <laughs> in the first place. And also you look at those uh, technology, uh, 45 nanometer here, this is quite, quite, a, uh, quite, quite, good, uh, quite good thing. Uh, afterwards, I understand that that uh, place like Stanford has contracted service for this kind of yeah uh, yeah classics. I think that I think the industry probably beg to actually uh, implement some of their stuff to have you know publicity and 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 experience and and, and poach those guys to actually work for them in the, you know uh, down the line here it's interesting is all these you know read pointer sparse so it's matrix not like single ASIC that they produce they they have more than one project and more than one ASIC that they send regularly. These are for me. These are pilot study, in a sense. Uh, yeah, with they, they are contracted for many pilot studies, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I understand that here the problem is to to contract enough 
to, to make the foundry uh, interested. Yeah, yeah, I guess. If, if you are in an environment where there's a lot of soft money for high tech industry doing that kind of thing, which you know isn't keep learning is all this new technology. Uh, Tesla Tesla is using this for some of the pedestrian detection they, they refer in the paper. So you can see that there's you know a couple of billions to actually you know spend into those designs is is not it depends on the scale of, of, of what you see you know what you uh, what what you, you you deal with it. So here you have the CPU this is the the reference huh? afterwards GPU compressed GPU dense so dense and compressed is those machines that like you said you basically um, the more you do uh, some of those operations are different. Uh, MGPU, I think, is multiple GPU. And here, this is their system. And of course, their system, you know, multiplied by two, 24,000 thing. Uh, here, those numbers are, are because of the amount of money and the amount of design that you do. And that the CPU, the CPU is the base. You can, you can design the base. But here, all of these are, were not designed to do no network in the first place or not yeah. you know they can adapt to do no neural network but they were not interestingly designed for this this is a customized machine for that particular uh, uh, test but still they, 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 they got charged downstairs Alex like 119,000 yeah, yeah but that's energy is it really uh, uh, yeah. Oh. You, that, you, that, you give them a phone call. Uh, no, no, uh, how, how, do, how do you how do you if you buy how do you reproduce such a research? You cannot because this is their design, and mm -hmm. uh, you can reproduce one to those because the, the GPU number. is you know <laughs> but those number you, you cannot you cannot really. Uh, but yeah, physically, to them it's like one one nine eight zero zero. With comparison to GPU, them subtracting compressed, and you still have like thousands of graphics cards that need it. But this is this is quite a big machine. Huh? This is not uh, it's not. Uh, so you know. The, the normal CPU, the GPU Titan, the the Tigra, and then there, there's also theoretical time and actual time. So this is you know probably like from a simulator they can assess you know or at least estimate you know whether it's actually yeah. useful to make it in the first place. You know if those numbers are not so good then they wouldn't be this. Afterwards, uh, you can also because you have a very highly specialized machine. Which consume use than a GPU and far less, I mean, so less than a GPU and far less than a CPU in the first place. Then you can really look at the, you know the the you can scale the let's say you know, some of the, the width of your memory and, and do all sorts of of, of happy thing and the precision etc. Down the line, uh, it's also about the speed up uh, when you actually have uh, uh, for a particular let's say neural network. You have actually one processing element, and then you scale, 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 and you can see that actually everything scales linearly. So you know the the more the more chip they put at it, the better it's going to be. If I may interrupt for a small yeah. moment, this is why you want to turn off cores <laughs> to produce graphs like this. Yeah, <laughs> I mean this is a particular task. It's it's yes. not you know it cannot run anything else than than. Uh, uh, but I understand that basically what neural network training is is multiplication addition and do it again so it's basically a very simple vector yeah. engine and and this takes uh, takes advantage of the parallelism basically yeah and, and so the if you, pipelining if you do of some those kind of addition multiplication on matrices you should be able to reuse mm -hmm. it yeah but your your cpu and your gpu uh, if you look at uh, your gpu it, it has much more primitives in the sense to do more things yeah you, you possibly you, yeah i mean but there are a lot of things that you can do with matrix multiplication and, and addition, especially sparse matrices. The the the, the issue of, of such paper is really to show that you know uh, the high, the higher the number of, of processing and those processes are, are really specialized. They are you know everything is, is better and better and better. It's not a these paper uh, really look here, you know. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, the DRAM, blah 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 blah, and then afterwards is uh, you know, uh, this is tend to be external RAM, where this tends to be uh, sometimes faster RAM, but still, this okay, is a NASIC. So that, 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 that shows so the, how the, they are. Uh, yeah. You so the the four, the, the, the four, the three hundred megs of uh, static RAM is much much faster and very yeah, but, very but, expensive. But here it's external, so here. You, 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 you integrate everything basically you integrate yeah. everything so that's probably most of the surface of yeah. the chip this one uh, Diane now that this is uh, 
Uh, is it the Chinese? Yeah, uh, well, for computer. Yeah, is, you know, is it Bao? Is it or one of the Chinese company also oh, I don't know. try try to do some of this with the ASIC? Uh, uh, so actually, uh, yeah, do you this know is which company. I, I, is I think for, yeah, I think by yeah, oh. I, I assume that this is. I, I read a couple of papers. I, I assume this is Baidu, and this is yeah. You know, I, yeah. I don't think anyone else is. Yeah. No, no, yeah, 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 it has to be. So I mean, it's you, this not one, entirely this fair to compare, but if no. you think about your processor, uh, the most of the surface of the chip is cache, actually, not the core. But that's exactly what I'm saying. The, the and it's just few yeah. makes. Yeah, yeah. The, the, all of these are not comparable from a from a task point of view. They were not designed for this. But yeah. from an accessibility point of view, you can buy this, you can buy this, you can buy an mm. FPGA. Up to here, this is not accessible for the normal person. But the efficiency, energy efficiency, it demonstrates that, you know, it's very efficient. And it leads to the conclusion that ultimately you will have an ASIC in your watch that do all sorts of, of you know, pedestrian recognition and God knows what, based on this. <laughs> it's, you know, this is, those papers are sort of, you know, showing in a, in a light that, you know, the this is viable later on for, 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 for production in a sense. Th these are, for me, these are really uh, 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 pre-study to really you know, demonstrate and, and make the whole thing saying, you know, deep learning will be used because what, one interesting thing here is a one bit fixed. This, this one, uh, I'm not sure, is that, you know, one bit, I don't know, suddenly, suddenly here. Four bits, I understand, but the one bit. <laughs> There, there might be specific thing I didn't check that paper yet, but there might be specific thing that 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 is playing here. There. Oh. Um, the last paper is basically uh, same people, deep scale. So this is suddenly you have people from deep scale being part of the authors, and you can actually download this uh, SqueezeNet from the GitHub, the GitHub, and you really have half a meg. Of, uh, of 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 basically neural network train uh, weights, and this is still smaller than uh, they say AlexNet, which was the the original uh, network, yeah. which was you know winning in the competition. So those papers are quite similar. Some of them re uh, replace those three by three filter by one by one filter. One by one filter for me it's a multiplication. It's not a filter anymore, but yeah. you know <laughs> this is the, the the language of research. It's a filter still. And uh, they do some sensitivity analysis. So uh, this, I think, I think maybe I'd like to you know take if, if those paper, I mean GPU. I can go through the slide, but they're more or less the same. It's the same flavor, but it's the is the most recent paper they have, and they really squeeze to half a meg. Uh, half a meg becomes really really uh, interesting because you can really even on an FPGA you can really start to to make it you know uh, happening. They they look at the you know the different fire fire etc and then they reduce certain aspect they, with some convolution one uh, <coughs> afterwards they, they basically look at the input image the size of it uh, so many layers different type of operators uh, and at the end from a million point one point two million they actually get to four hundred k so this is you know when they actually detail all the so the reduction. It's unclear for me how much of this is automatic analysis and how much of this is like fine tuning without an overarching methodology. It, it's not the 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 application of those is not really it's from a mathematical point of view if you look at quantization quantization is a mathematical yeah, yeah, concept but, but, they but it's not the, the the aim is really to reduce the the, the a very specific network, yeah. Uh, Not in general. Yes, but they are. The, the The idea here is that you know the, those uh, uh, those network are were provided for competition, worldwide competition, and the people who win are one where the people who develop the best network, etc. Afterwards, you are you are sitting on on the the shoulders of of those people and say, you know, the network that you actually design. I can reduce the size of it and still show that the the accuracy when using it in a real scenario is still the same. There is there's no loss in accuracy, but the weight the, the size of it is is reduced. This this can be. So there is no acceptable loss of accuracy. There's no acceptable. They they, they do not accept like one percent accuracy. Also. No, they they don't reduce they don't improve on the accuracy of that network. They don't imp imp they, but they reduce the weight. To up to a point where the accuracy, the where the accuracy stay the same, do not have any loss. So 
if they would reduce even more, they will start to lose accuracy from their original network, and then it's not good. It, it, they were, so the achievement here is is a, is a weight reduction. I wish I could be you know, having some weight reduction in my sets. So. <laughs> These are already trained. Yes, yeah, yeah, they are trained in computer. Yes, you yeah. give it computers, then they just compress it to. to yes, be yeah, able yeah. To those are those them. are trained on on. Uh, on data set which I was shown at the beginning. So okay. all the data set, actually, the data set you can get, the, the, those um, network, either you get them as a configuration file for a tool, or you get actually the weights. Okay. Uh, if you want to implement that into your C, you basically dump the weight in a certain format, okay. and you can actually run it, uh, run it on your, and a lot of it is you know, exposing some GPU because you want to basically accelerate things. Uh, but the, the, I mean, the nice thing about all this research is really computer science in the sense that everything is shared and, and you can reproduce. This is a reproducible uh, research having the hardware in the first place because it's not, uh, I'm not sure how, how it takes, I mean, maybe when you demo it from your laptop, on your laptop. Um, so it's the same, you know, from 4.8, 0 0.4. Th these are numbers which are more embedded system-like. So ultimately, you know, they will be running on a, an embedded system like uh, si embedded system basically so these are basically the my presentation or you know give you uh, some introduction on this the the interesting thing for me is that uh, if, if I if I take one of these like this uh, this fits into an FPGA this is fixed I mean, not nicely but fixed into an FPGA i.e. Uh, if I get the the configuration of that of, of that neural network mm -hmm. and I know the precision of each of those um, each of those layers, etc., I can actually, in theory, uh, develop this on an FPGA in an easier way because the those weights are, are, are minimized in size, in a sense. But the accuracy of those compared to a full-blown one is the same. So this is the, the important thing. You're not losing in, in, in accuracy. Uh, so if you had a, a PC running with four gig of, of weights trying to detect with a camera, a pedestrian on the road, the same neural network but with a reduced weight uh, system on an embedded system with a camera should be able to actually have the same accuracy. Uh, uh, it, it's a nice faster. example. It may, be, it may be even more efficient. Could be efficient in terms of power, in terms power, of processing, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, well, as soon as you prune, you reduce the number of multiplication. Uh, when you reduce the weight accuracy, you need a you need a, a customized hardware to do that multiplication. You know, if you have a 30, if you have a 32 bit multiplier on your hardware, whether your coefficient are six bit or seven bit, you will still end up, you know, those registers being uh, b bigger in a sense. Uh, so some of those uh, uh, FPGA card I have at work have uh, like seven plus DSP slides, which are blocks can do multiplication in one clock. So these are architecture, which, you know, be become basically uh, logical to implement some of these uh, everything in parallel in a sense. Uh, so ultimately, I try to basically. Uh, Martin, uh, okay. if, if you give me five ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. So this is the this is the theory or the papers, not uh -huh. by me. Huh? Uh, I'm only reporting. And this is the practitioner. This is the real. Can I, yes. I can't this this is not my laptop. No, and I have nothing to. to okay, I'll just wave my hands around. Okay. <laughs> so I, I saw these papers and I thought these are awesome. Um, back in back when they came out, and I thought, well, another big glob of data that we have doing this neural network stuff when you're doing natural language is a word embedding. So I'm not sure whether anyone. I'm assuming people are familiar with what word embedding is because it comes up a lot. Basically, you run across a huge corpus of text and look at which words come next to each other. But by doing this repeatedly and refining a model, you can get something where you can get um, word similarity. So you can say that apple is near orange, less near turnip, quite a long way from concrete. So that there's, there's a whole variety of word similarity tasks you can do. You can also do something called word analogy, where you do king, queen, uh, sorry, man, woman, king, who. And by looking at the geometry, you, see, you can find out it's queen. And so basically, you, for one of these things, a typical vocab could be 200,000 words, and you'd have a 300-dimensional space, and you'd store all of these at 32 bits, because that's what everyone does, and you've got a block of half a gig of 
disk which you load in at the beginning of this thing and then you da -da -da. so when I saw this I was like oh that could be compressed surely and so what I did is I, I then did this it boils down to this centroid thing um, and so we can compress the 32 bits down to 3 bits okay so there's a 10x in there and you get the same basic scores basically un when you uncompress it you get to the same metrics you began with okay so in a way it's unsurprising so now I submitted I was going with I see it I see a for this except that there was an additional step so what this is but by doing this kind of Lloyd compression or this centroids compression you're really doing it like a PNG I mean you're, you're taking an image and you're compressing it like crazy and then you expand it and you've got the same thing but if you think about JPEGs, you're getting compression, and you're, you're because you are, you're getting compression because you understand the visual processing. PNG is like a mathematical thing. JPEGs are compressed because they they're slightly lossy, but they work because they understand your visual core, how you are un interpreting the color map, whatever. So what I really wanted to do, and I didn't get done in time for ICLR, but I've now submitted to some Japanese conference. <laughs> Um, is say well for, for the, since I can now take these 300 reels down to three bits each so 900 bits so if I treat the 900 bits as like a budget of how much data I can have for each vector what can I store in 900 bits now the clear thing that you want to do with words and this is what this is a psychological thing is that when you have a word people will associate 10 or 20 or you know, 50 different aspect positive aspects to the word like a dog it'll be it will make noises it will be a pet it will be furry it will be obedient it will be friendly a bunch of different things it will be canine right but but you don't say well a dog does not have wheels I mean that's the one thing I know about dogs right it's, uh, it, it's not so so people remember positive sparse aspects about words wouldn't it be better, rather than this dense matrix of 300, to have positive sparse um, impressions? So with a, if, you, if you think about it, if, suppose I have 1,000, 1,024 different positive aspects, which is 10 bits. I say, well, I can do with 3 bits resolution on each of them, this is 13 bits. I've got 900 to do, I've got like 60 sparse elements within this 1,000 string look at it the other way suppose I had a string which is all zero apart from 60 ones or 60 elements I can then quantize it by storing the address and a, a weight for each one and also depending on the order in which I store them I can have instead of, I can store the first one with high, high resolution and then kind of store a step down amount so the first one might be the same they're always going to be less because they're in order you, you can compress this thing into a sparse and so the, the nice thing about this is, yes, it does work. So basically, you can take, you get a matrix which I say I, I'm going to have this as sparse. I have a big kind of dictionary matrix, and it will multiply up to give my original matrix. And you gradually optimize your sparse thing and your dictionary to continually equal the, the end result. And you can, it's quite easy to see. Sorry, you can measure that this gives you the same result. But the interesting thing is if you then throw away the dictionary, so you no longer have any of this data, you just have the sparse stuff, now what have we got? The interesting thing is this also works with the same... <laughs> this also, if you throw away all of the data, so now you've just got this sparse thing left over, it now knows that apple and orange are the same, that this word similarity scores are the same, basically. Okay. The, the nice byproduct of this is that the sparse vectors actually mean something. So in the dense, in the dense array, each, each column of this doesn't really mean anything. It's like in some really weird 300-dimensional space. Who knows what these... The directions don't mean anything. It's like symmetrical. It doesn't mean anything. The sparse thing, because everything is zero apart from a few things, when you look at what words respond to this one direction, you can see, oh, this, this is about vehicles. This one's about age. This one's about irresponsibility. If you look at the word motorbike, you'll see that it's a combination of vehicles and age and law breaking wow. and racing. And this comes naturally out of just reading, in my case, Wikipedia again and again and again. So there's no labeling going on, but you can pick out these nice word, these are nice word clusters. Um, 
This is like to be continued. So the one thing it doesn't do, or it, do, it only does badly, is the word analogy thing, which is king, queen, man, woman, king, queen. If you say the way it's well done in like a big vector space is you say, well, queen is king plus man, or queen minus man, basically. It's a, a vector dish, it's like a geometry rather than a directionality. So the geometry is all messed up when you take these sparse vectors, or these positive sparse vectors, because the this minus sign doesn't work, right? And so uh, this is what I'm now going to be thinking about. Maybe it's more like Boolean operations or set operations, which you have to think about. Um, and that's, anyway, that, that's, the, that, that's my next salami slice of this paper, right? <laughs> as to how to make the geometry thing work well. But, then there's another another possibility we could say well given that I can extract all of these really juicy um, directions m maybe there's a four thousand directions there's only twelve bits and, yeah very sp there's, so there's some interesting techniques about sparsification which are, are developed and GPUized and stuff um, so maybe we could use those as the kernel like the basis for the next iteration through Wikipedia to like generate the next set of stuff maybe you could produce WordNet from nothing. Anyway, that's I could also that's the way I'm going. quite a few applications when having just positive representation is enough. Yeah, it's kind of it. I thought it was interesting. Because yeah. you are already looking at the top positive markups or top positive and negative. Yeah. So, but for the but for the, the dense embeddings, it's all positive, all negative anyway. Because you can rotate this whole thing. You can rotate the sp in space in any. 300 dimensions is still the same thing. So these new embeddings that you have, uh, yeah. they're, they're not binary, right? They're, but they're like no, no. Well, I haven't, I haven't tried. If I try binarizing it, it it gets worse. It gets worse. So there is some, me so there is some um, value in having the the, the disk slightly different scales. But I, I haven't really worked much on how to. I, I was really working within a bit budget. But could could I with the same bit budget? give me something which told me information and so that's like a minimum description length idea and apparently yes so. of course they'll probably say no it's the paper so, so which <laughs> conference do you send that to? there's one called Iconip in Japan it's, it's, it's well, when do you plan to have an answer and thus you can refer the paper itself? Well, no, uh, th that that would be presumptuous, but, but if, it, if it iterates again, I'll, it'll probably be in RCLR next year. Right? So it's like, <laughs> but that's the idea, because I tried, and they were quite enthusiastic about the idea of compressing these embeddings. Oh, okay. But I had this bigger vision of learning something from the sparsification, which they probably thought could, could you just never like work. Could learn the sparse embeddings directly? directly. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could like, have, have the sparse uh, custom, and then you know, you're just well, throwing so, so what, and then what, you... But when you take the original matrix of word incidents, it's already sparse. It's just yeah. vast and sparse. So this is folding it. Yeah. In a way, the dense thing is, is an interesting folding that it can be folded so much. But this is just take this. I can take any embedding, compress it up, and I get these words, these clusters coming out, which is really interesting. Anyway, sorry. Mate, can I have two questions? <laughs> One, what is the ratio of compression? Okay, so if I have... In terms of spasmatics. So if I have 1024, I can afford like 60 in order to get within the 900. Mm -hmm. So that's 6, 6 7, 5 percent. And, <laughs> and if it's 4096, four then, then I'm down to 1.2 percent something, sparseness. Mm. So these things are very... This is one of the reasons why the similarity becomes difficult in that if you've got two things which are kind of different, it'll be like this, mm. and there'd be no overlap whatsoever. Mm. So I was kind of so reticent about have getting really... Similar, similarity or very remote Well, th so this is maybe, maybe it needs to go through some kind of fuzzing process before I can do proper similarity. But I, I like the idea of it being sparse. And the second question I have is, what is your algo for making it sparse? Okay, so this is, some, this is an extension of a NIPS paper from last year where what people typically do to make things sparse is they calculate all the coefficients and then they try and make things zero. Or they impose an, an L1 constraint or something which kind of tends to do that. But the problem is you can't really control how sparse it is after you do that. Mm -hmm. So it may be that you end up with you know, 25% sparse, which completely blows away my constraint. So the way to do it, 
the way the neat way to do it is to look at all of these you make your constraint that you want only the top you, you have like a, a dropout so dropout is something where you impose random zeros across your your connections and it kind of works pretty well so what what they what this method does is essentially you say I will only want k percent of my connections to be live so I'll pick the top k and then I zero out everything else and so things the, the weights will kind of so compete. It's very, very quick you just Th take the, 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 the one scan and well it's actually top top k percent is not so easy because you don't know the scale so this is one of the things where GPU does not like this because it wants to do yeah, a, the actual algorithm wants to do a sort yeah. so this, I think, was why they didn't bother continuing with that paper, because you need to do a sort to do a proper k percent. But if you're willing to accept, I want about a k percent, particularly since I'm doing this 100,000 times, about k percent is good enough, because on average some will be higher, some will be lower. You can just repeatedly say, well, I guess, guess this level, and then, then iterate. You can binary search on this thing, and that five binary searches gives me good enough. So you're, you're saying there's a paper on uh, like selective dropout based on the like saturation or is that what you're saying? Yes, oh, yes. Look so it's, it's called like um, like winner takes all auto okay. encoders. But they can't they can only do it on a CPU so I did the GPU version. And uh, I guess if you use the median to get top k percent you could get pretty close. Right. One of the Sorry, I digress. One of the interesting things is that the distribution going into this, the weights, you'd say, oh, it's going to be normal, right? And so if I've got, I can pick the median and I can pick the extreme, and then you can kind of tell where my sparseness must be because it's going to be normal. What happens is because these things are kind of competing to get into the bucket, the ones which are just below are competing to get into the bucket to be considered otherwise they're zero, what happens is the distribution of it changes completely. And so your assumption about extrema is completely wrong by like the third iteration. And your whole GPU kind of like dies. I mean, you just <laughs> the experiment dies because it, it's, none of the assumptions are right. So binary search ended up being the way to do it. Yeah. There we go. So there's, there's, there's kind of highly technical issues, but mm -hmm. let's say. There we go. Ching <laughs> Thank you very much.